Ah, uh, yes, it's another Wednesday. Another opportunity to sit back, relax, and just hang out for a while. Let's hang out. Hello again. It is Wednesday. I'm back. It's been a little bit of a break here between things. A little late getting through some of these episodes and getting these edited. I'm sure this will be out on time-ish. No, I'm just kidding. This is being re-recorded. Uh, this is an original idea that I had. I recorded part of the episode before uh, a whole bunch of chaos happened. And I decided rather than having two episodes and kind of dragging things out, I wanted to condense a couple topics together and get things back to being current and talking about things in the moment and, and all that stuff going on. So if you guys are new to the channel, thank you guys for listening in. If you're a return visitor, thank you guys for coming back and checking things out. This is Let's Hang Out, the weekly, well, not weekly, bi-weekly podcast where I talk about life and things going on. You guys can follow all of the conversation. You guys can join the conversation at any point. Uh, you can tag us on all socials. You can find us on all socials using the uh, the handle at Let's Hang Out Pod. Uh, you can also tag comments and such with the hashtag Let's Hang Out Pod, and then whatever the the uh, episode hashtag is, if we have one that episode, uh, you can include those in there too, and make it a little easier to find. But you can find the podcast pretty much everywhere at Let's Hang Out Pod. So if you guys want to join in to, on conversations, suggest other topics. Uh, give me feedback on things we've talked about or th other uh, other ideas. I mean, feel free. Everything's open. Not really a whole lot off the table at the moment. Haven't really had anything pop up that's like, eh, I don't want to touch that. But it's open. All the channels are there. Please feel free. Join in whenever you guys feel like it. So the previous recording I had, the episode that was going to come out and I was going to edit today, I decided to go ahead and scrap and just condense it down. After listening to it a second time after taking a week away from it, and I'll explain why I took a week away from it, um, I just, I felt like I could take out some of the filler stuff. It felt like it was kind of rambly in places that it didn't need to be. And it just, it's, yeah. It was a chance to really review it and, and see how it feels. So, uh, what we had talked about then was the uh, current situation, job hunting, and getting back to you guys with how that was going. Um, and just kind of talking about what that feels like, going from being a stay-at-home dad to trying to get back into the work world. Uh, my personal experience with this most recent situation of interviews and such. Um, and then just kind of talking about what it means to prepare and to be successfully prepared for interviews and, and you know, selling yourself to hopefully a future employer. So during the last episode that we had, uh, I had talked about how I was applying for a job to get back into the work world because things have gotten kind of expensive. Doing basic things like going grocery shopping, getting gas, all of those things have gone up in price. They've all just been just climbing. The prices just do not seem to want to stop. So I was being forced into a position where I need to get back into the working world. You know, ideally in the perfect situation, the wife is working, she's working her dream job right now, and, um, you know, we make that work because I'm a stay-at-home dad and I can support the kids with all their needs and we don't have to worry about daycare, uh, after-school stuff, we don't have to worry about any of that except for, you know, their sports activities and, and getting that situated. So I was looking for a job. I was looking for things part-time that I could do in the mornings, um, and I, I found a few. One I went to apply for and the listing was already gone. And another one I applied for and went through the whole process of things. Uh, I had applied to be a, uh, an assistant secretary at a local high school. Everything went great. Had kind of the first initial interview over the phone. And it was wonderful. They loved talking to me. They loved all the information. Uh, they pushed me through to the next round. And then they needed me to submit uh, letters of reference. Which I only needed a few. I needed three of them. And I received uh, five or six in total. To my friends, if you guys are listening, if you're uh, checking out the podcast and you happen to hear this episode, and you were one that wrote a letter, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Getting those was the most amazing thing because it was something I really wasn't expecting that many people to respond and be willing to write a letter. And the letters I did receive uh, were easily some of the most kind and amazing things I've ever read. And I'm not one to compliment myself. I, I don't take compliments well. I get awkward about it. 
but being able to see and read how I've affected my friends' lives and the things that they have going on, uh, I'm not going to obviously speak to too much because some of the some of the comments in there were uh, personal interactions and such to kind of help validate things, uh, validate the points they were trying to help me sell about myself. But just a lot of really feel good comments were made and I, I didn't realize how much I needed that until I got those. So thank you guys if you wrote those. So I went ahead and I submitted everything, went through the process, waited and waited and waited, checked in daily to make sure my name was at the top of their list so that way, you know, hopefully when they, they get to it, they've already got kind of a, well, this guy is really interested to be here kind of mentality. Went through it and I got a phone call from the superintendent, from the district superintendent. And he informed me that I did not, unfortunately, make it to the next set of interviews because I was not bilingual. He said everything else was great. I was overqualified for the position and overqualified for many of the positions available and they would love to have me on board in somewhere the administrative side of things. Um, and to just keep an eye out and then apply if something pops up. But for that specific position, they wanted bilingual. And it took me a while of digging through the listing, but I finally found what I did note that the, uh, ideally, it wasn't required, but ideally they wanted someone bilingual. So, missed opportunity, that's alright. It kind of re-humbled me and everything, and made me feel better about myself with a lot of the talents and skills that I picked up over, you know, my, my years working. And that even with this large gap that I could still speak to keeping myself busy and bettering myself and working on projects that I personally feel like have made me a better person. You know, at the time, uh, the original episode I was talking about how it made me feel kind of stepping back into the working world, even now thinking on it, it, it would be a weird change. You know, um, I've been a stay at home dad for almost 12 years. It has been one of the craziest things. And it's been one of the most rewarding things that I could have never asked for. It just kind of worked out in the perfect world. That's how this ended up. And it's been great. Going back to the working world, I did try, I did try uh, a couple years back. I was offered a job because of my uh, leadership role with a youth bowling league. The original center that we had the league at... Uh, I was talking with the general manager and such, and he had explained that there was no real lead person in charge of it. And with us going and taking our kids to go bowling and bowling on the league and whatnot, uh, we headed off. We had a great conversation, and uh, he had asked about my leadership because I had applied for just a general job there. And he didn't have anything available that would fit what I needed, but uh, was curious about me possibly taking over the youth league because I had a lot of ideas and I was involved with the coaches. And I had talked to one of the coaches, um, and he was just, he was a genuinely really good guy. Worked well with the kids, constantly talking with my wife and I when we were there, and I talked to him one-on-one -on -one at one point, and I told them, like, hey, I know this is kind of your thing. You're technically leading this thing, because everybody goes to you. They offered me the, the role of being the league supervisor, is what the title was, what he wanted to give it, league supervisor. And I, I didn't want to step on any toes. I didn't want to intrude in any way because, again, our kids were in the league and we were loving what was going on. And he's, he just flat out, he's like, absolutely. You have a better brain for organization than I do. You're much younger and can think a lot faster than I can to get this stuff going. And just a great conversation. Uh, ended up supporting me and backing me for it. Um, so I did it. And that's where I ended up becoming the, the supervisor, the coordinator for a youth league for, you know, seven years. Five years, seven years, something like that. But yeah, it was just, it was one of those things where I could speak to filling in time. The youth thing, I was offered, again, I was offered that job because of running the youth league. Um, when the new company took over the bowling center we were at, they wanted to put me in as a paid league coordinator. And they wanted me in helping to input scores from weekly leagues, which was totally fine. Um, they never gave me the actual title of league secretary because they wanted to keep that with their graphics person who was doing the job as well, which just complicated things. It was a very hot, cold relationship at times, and it's a, that's a whole nother story, a whole nother episode. Um, but again, I was offered a job uh, during my time staying at home, and it worked out because it was when the kids were at school, and I could, uh, this was before my youngest was born. Uh, so I could go and work in there for a few hours, 
get off of work, go pick up my kiddos from school because I had to pick them up. I had to drive and go get them. Um, and then we go home and rinse repeat. But even then, it just it felt odd. Something about that whole process felt really off with the schedule. It didn't really, it didn't sit well with me. I think it was more because at the time, towards the, the end of it, you know, my wife was pregnant and the kids were the kids were getting more active and we just had a lot of going on, so it didn't really work. So this time, going into things and applying, this was a necessity over a want. And it wasn't something offered to me, it was, I, I went out seeking this. And I think just mentally, listening back to my comments and everything, I was in the right headspace to do this. It was something I wanted to do and get back to working. Um, I need to do something to kind of help with things out, help with the, the financial side of things. And uh, yeah, it just, it was a different headspace. It was much different than the first time around getting put back in there. And I think doing it now, the bigger concern was making sure that I'm out in time to be home for a little one because I have to be there to pick her up from the bus stop. Myself or my wife have to be there to get her from the bus stop. And uh, right now it's not like the wife can just drop what she's doing, come home, pick her up, and then go back to work. There was a lot of prep work going into it and consideration of what we need to do to prepare for that change if it happened. So, and in the end, it was, it's been a great experience. Um, I did not get the offer the job, like I said, and uh, I, I'm bummed about it, but at the same time, I understand. I fully do. I had a great conversation with the superintendent, and I'm checking back in and watching for things to see what I can do. So in the chaos of things between episodes and all of that going on, I also had a birthday. And, you know, that's to me, a birthday is just a normal day, but it's a day to hang out with my family and stuff, and they, they showered me with love and everything during the day. Um, and then the day kind of took a very hard left turn. Um, our old dog is uh, no longer with us. The night of my birthday, she ended up having a really bad seizure. Uh, we ended up taking her to the ER. They looked her over, said that it's probably going to happen again and to keep an eye out. And you know, just there was a lot of bad signs and they got home with her and about an hour later she had another seizure. Um, and then just from that point, that first seizure messed with her. She was already kind of in a rough spot with things. Um, until she was getting a little, a little older, slower, more tired, uh, not able to do all the things she used to be able to do. Uh, but that seizure just escalated everything to a different level. Uh, she was having a real hard time standing, hard time walking at times. Basic functions were falling apart. Our entire lives having her, she never really had like an accident in the home. You know, there were some circumstances where we had pads and stuff that she would use uh, back in the apartment when we lived in the apartment because just there was no place to take her or walk her. So we'd had her pad trained. But she'd never had an issue here. She'd never had any kind of an accident, nothing like that. And then after the seizure, we were having daily, up to two times a day, potty accidents in the house. It, just, it, was, it was getting bad. Um, they noticed that her eye was starting to swell. Uh, she had a glaucoma of the eye, lens luxation, which is a flipping of the lens inside the eyeball, uh, just a lot of things that happened. Uh, the lens luxation is likely caused from the spasming of the, the face, so it was just, it was a bad time. There was a lot of things happening, and uh, the seizure just took it to a whole nother level, and we made the tough choice watching her suffer even through the medications that she was getting. Uh, she just, she was not herself. She was looking at us and just never, it was never the same light, never the same light in her face. And we just, we didn't want to put her through that. And my wife and I had talked about it a long ago that if she ever got to the point that it looked like she was really in pain and suffering and not able to do the basic things that, you know, we would make the least selfish decision possible. Um, and it was tough. We gave the kids plenty of time to process and prepare themselves. We talked about it and we didn't hide it. We didn't hide the fact that we were going to be putting down the dog. Um, we kept them involved through the whole process. And uh, unfortunately the following week, the following, so a week later, last week, um, we ended up taking her in and she crossed the rainbow bridge in peace. And um, we got her back. We got her ashes back just before I went on my vacation, before I went on my trip to Vegas. So. It's been a rough week. It's been a rough two weeks. The episode, like I said, last episode came out in the middle of all of the chaos and things kind of ramping up to the birthday and the big seizure and all that. It's just, it's a lot of the process. 
it hit me really hard. I wasn't expecting it to hit me as hard as it did, but it was all the little things that I started noticing around the house and the feelings I was getting, you know, uh, I, I just, something about Wednesday and everything hitting me, making me realize that I was truly home alone for the first time in 12 years. Um, because we've had her since she was a pup and she, uh, she's been there through everything. So, uh, walking out and not seeing her on the couch is still a hard thing. Not hearing her little paws, you know, tapping along on our, our wood floor. Um, it's weird not hearing that, not having to quickly pick up food and stuff that, you know, falls off a plate because we don't need her eating it. Um, dancing around food trays, her little uh, water dish and food bowl, little stand they were in. We don't have to dance around that out in the kitchen anymore. It's such a weird change. It's literally like taking a leg away and, and trying to act normal. It, it's hard to process. This is my first time going through losing a pet. It's been very rough. Uh, this weekend, I think, was very needed. My Vegas trip was very much needed. And that, that'll be a whole other episode because I have so much to talk about, so many funny things that happened. But yeah, it's this was this was something I wanted to talk about. I didn't feel like I, I needed to make a full episode uh, just, you know, talking about the sadness of pets passing. We, we all go through it at some point if you have a pet. You know, inevitably, though, they will pass before you. There's very few pets that we have that will outlive us. And the reality is, you know, dogs and cats, 15 is kind of that, that number where things go bad. Um, and if you have a pet older than 15, you're lucky. Um, like I said, our, our sweet little old lady, she was almost 12. She would have been 12 next month. So it's just, it, it sucks that we lost some time with her. But again, I didn't feel like a full episode was necessary to sit here and be all down in the feels about it. Because if there's anything that we've learned after her passing is that she really was part of the family and we're going to miss her dearly. So, you know, just take that with a grain of salt and understand that, you know, if you have a pet, that time flies by very quickly. We celebrated birthdays. We celebrated her birthday just like the kids and uh, maybe not to the same extent as inviting friends over, but, <laughs> you know, we, we celebrated and she was, she was part of the family. Pets, man. It, it's, it's been rough. It's been a very rough two weeks. Um, the trip was perfect to kind of reset things. I look forward to it every year and I just, I could not be more thankful that it happened this year the way that it did. Um, and again, I'll talk about that in a different episode here and, um, just kind of see where we stand with things. Cause the, the big takeaway with that and kind of the, the it ties in with all of this here with the work, looking for work and losing a pet and all that, like, Having some friends, having some good quality friends that you can talk to and vent to really makes a difference. And the ones that you can turn to to help you out. You know, half the letters I received were from my, my gaming buddies. And I have i don't like going to them and, and bringing personal crap to them to help out with because we're, we're, we're playing a game, you know? We've been playing a game together for over or almost 10 years. And... Um, to this day, I just try to keep the fun around when we're playing. But this is one of those where like, I, I don't have anybody left, really, that I used to work with that's around that would write anything, you know? So having them reach out, I, I shouldn't say having them reach out, I reached out to them and having them respond, you know, just it, it speaks to them. And I think the episode, the Vegas episode, will actually be an episode talking about the friends and how much I really appreciate them and what that means. And kind of a deep dive into what it means to have good friends. But uh, having these guys around, just it was everything from the work situation to losing our pet Aspen and, and everything in between. Make sure you have a good group of friends. Keep them around, keep them close, and truly just make sure that they understand how much they're valued. Yeah, I, I think that's probably a good place to leave that one. Just make sure you have good friends and they know, they really know how much they mean to you. So that's the recap. That's the reason why things have been off and off schedule. Um, so this episode, again, meant to kind of fill things in and let you guys know that life does happen. And you just kind of roll with the punches. It's what we're built to do. Shouldn't be an everyday thing to be constantly rolling with the punches and trying to figure things out to just survive. But it just, life does happen and it happens at the most unexpected times. And you've got to be ready to make that change. So hug your pets, 
hug your dog, your cat, a little tighter and a little little longer each day. You know, be thankful for for the friendships you have. You know, I'm not done. I'm not giving up on the job hunt. I will figure something out that works with the schedule. Uh, we will eventually get a new pet. We're gonna continue with our process of kind of getting through things and making the adjustments uh, and getting life back on track before we dive into that. During the holidays, probably not the best time to do it. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. But yeah, this is the uh, this is just a a follow up recap, a way for me to have a moment to explain and share and apologize profusely for a delayed episode. Um, but, but this will mean that you guys will get back to back weeks of episodes. So this one will come out. Uh, I'll have this one scheduled for the twenty fifth, which is today. So happy the twenty fifth. Um, <laughs> And then the next one will be a week out, so that should be the um, the November episode, November 1st, I believe. Yeah, November 1st. So, we'll have gone through that, we'll have also gone through Halloween. Um, so you guys, if you celebrate Halloween, whether it's just yourself, if you're handing out candy, if you have kiddos you're going with or taking out, please, please, please be safe, have a wonderful, safe holiday, get tons of candy, have a bunch of fun, share some memories, and... Um, just genuinely have a wonderful wonderful week wonderful weekend uh again if you guys want to have any conversation about today's episode uh the topics that we brought up here i know it's kind of back and forth but it's again it's life that's i think that's what we're gonna make this hashtag is the uh that's life hashtag that's life so if you want to talk about things feel free again any of the socials at let's hang out pod uh hashtag let's hang out pod and then hashtag that's life And yeah, I think we'll wrap things up. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I'll see you guys next week, 7 a.m. like the usual release times. And you have yourself a wonderful rest of your week. Take it easy, guys.